This week on Performance TV, Dave shows us how to better preserve and protect your engine, as well as maximize its performance. Later on, Kathy dives into the truck's computer to show us how to boost its power and fuel economy. Next on Performance TV. Welcome to this week's Performance TV. You know, everybody from time to time, or at least you should, be changing out your coolant. Sometimes you just need to drain it to change a part or whatever. And if you're in a big shop, well, you might have a really cool machine like this. But if you're like me and just doing it at home in your shop, well, you got to have wet hands and let gravity do its job. But you know what? Wouldn't it be really cool as if you're going to change that coolant and you could go to a waterless product? Well, Evans has just such a product line. And with that, Dave has more. Okay, we've got all of our coolant out of there. Our petcock was pretty corroded from the water that we have in our system. I just simply use a little bit of blaster on there, let it sit for a bit, and it let us get that out of there. Today, I've got Mike from Evans Cooling, and he's going to explain why we want to use his coolant. Yeah, Evans is a waterless coolant, and that makes it different from virtually every other coolant that there is because they all contain typically 50% water. And why that's important is because although water has been used for a long time um, and it transfers heat very well, it has its challenges. One of those things is water creates corrosion. It also promotes electrolysis. And most important, water has a lower boiling point as compared to Evans with a high boiling point of 375 degrees. That means it won't form vapor, it won't build pressure, it remains a liquid even at higher temperatures. Hmm, I like that. So uh, what's our process? We can just drop this down and then uh, pour some in? Well actually we have to do a very thorough and deliberate job of getting the old coolant out because remember that old coolant contains water. So we want to keep this a waterless system so it's important to drain all the coolant out. To do that we're going to need a few tools. First of all we're going to need the coolant, the high performance waterless coolant, the waterless flush, the prep fluid. Okay. And to force that remaining coolant out, we're going to use a blower. Uh -huh. um, and then once we're through, we're going to test the water content with the test strips and a refractometer. See. But it's important to make sure you take the time to do it right, because in the end, um, it, you want to make sure it's below 3% water. So that water is that corrosive and that bad that even 3% we got to get out. Well, yeah, it, exactly. You know, especially if it sits there. Now, water-based coolant has additives to protect against corrosion, but over time, those additives fall out. Uh -huh. Where Evans remains, those additives remain in solution indefinitely. So Evans will protect your engine permanently and doesn't have to be changed out. So can I put this in any car? Yeah, actually, you can put it in any kind of vehicle that's liquid-cooled. And it's important because you can put it in a classic car, a muscle car, a hot rod, race cars. I think where performance, protection, preservation really matter, this is where Evans comes in. Well, let's go ahead and pour some in. Sure. Well, actually, what we have to do first is make sure we put the prep fluid in wow. to flush the system thoroughly to make sure we remove all the old water and clean out any debris, any additives that are in there. It'll do a good job of scrubbing out that old coolant in preparation for the high performance coolant. Oh, I see, okay. We don't want to bore you with 15 minutes of watching a car run, so we'll be back with Mike and his waterless coolant a little bit later in the show. Right now, we're gonna take a break. We'll be back with more Formance TV in just a bit. This edition of Performance TV is being brought to you by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Proline Tool and Supply, one tool, one operator, no problem. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Performance TV. There's a lot of diesel trucks on the road today. They've got a lot of performance in them, but we always want more performance. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna put a turbo on top of the turbo that's already on there. With us today is Corey from Randall's Performance. He's gonna help us getting this set up. What can you tell me about your kit? Uh, this is a compound turbo kit uh, made by Worley Custom Fabrication. It's a uh, complete bolt-on kit. 
It adds a Borg Warner uh, S475 or S480, depending on your choice, uh, turbo to your to your stock turbo that came on the on the truck. So it's already got one on there. We're going to put another one on there. How much performance is that going to give me? Uh, depending on other mods on the truck and tuning, uh, this truck was right around 349 horse at the rear wheels stock. Uh, this one has stock injectors in it, and it right now is 615 horse wow. at the rear wheels. Wow. Um, this kit is capable of, uh, depending on your turbo sizing, up to well past that 600 mark. Is that going to kill my gas mileage? Uh, actually, if you drive it friendly, it uh, will improve mileage, be more efficient. Huh. And when you say compound, what does that mean? Uh, we have two turbos. Uh, the large turbo is the atmosphere turbo. It feeds low pressure, high volume air to the smaller turbo, which compounds the, the boost and builds it higher. Crazy. I love this color. What do you call that? Uh, this is a candy red powder coat. And the kits on our website are, uh, you can choose just about any color you like. Uh, and they are custom made to your specification for color. Oh, man. And there's a lot more that comes with this kit, but we just didn't have a big enough table. It is a complete bolt-on kit. You will not eat any extra parts. Uh, there's heat wrapping uh, for the exhaust side of things, and then uh, complete boots, uh, clamps, oil lines. What exactly do all these little things do together? Uh, the, these are our air charge pipes. Uh, this is the wide bridge that goes to each head, feeds the motor. Um, this is the bracket that holds the S475 on the side of the engine so it's solid mounted, it's not moving. Uh, exhaust pipe from the factory turbo to the large turbo to drive it. And then we have a replacement uh, coolant reservoir that allows you uh, fits in there with the turbo and allows you to retain the, the battery in the factory location. So oh, I there's see. no moving moving the battery. So you guys done a lot of thinking about this. I really yes. like that overflow reservoir there. That's killer. If I'm doing this, is there any helpful, handy hints that I need for installation of something like this? Uh, it is time consuming. Um, you just need to take your time. There are a few other things that I would do while I was in there. Uh, while you have it thus far apart, these trucks are known for uh, fuel pump failures. Oh. Um, we have a conversion kit also from Whirly that converts them to a CP3 instead of a CP4. Uh, and then while you're there, this is a modified 10 millimeter uh, CP3 for more flow, more rail pressure, and that's from XRG Engineering. Oh, okay. Do I need to install this if I'm doing the turbo? You don't have to, but you would save a lot of labor as you're already there to right. do it, and uh, that would definitely make the truck live longer. Oh, I see. And these are, the originals were a bit problematic, so you've solved all those problems with this yeah. one. The original uh, pump in the 2011 and up trucks is a CP4. Uh, they tend to put metal debris in the injectors uh -huh. and cause injector failure and ultimately engine failure. Um, and at higher horsepower levels, they can't flow enough fuel. So uh -huh. we go back to a CP3 that uh, is more durable and can flow more fuel. I'm really liking this. You've got more products, don't you? Uh, yes, we do have a full line of performance products and accessories and everything for the trucks that you can get on our website. We also carry uh, tuning. Uh, this truck will have to be custom tuned, which you can also get on our website. Uh, exhaust systems, uh, different turbos. If, if the compound turbo setup's not what you want, we do have single, single turbos. Uh, Wide bridge kits, um, uh, injectors, pumps, uh, uh, just anything you would. So could pretty much need. everything I need for my diesel. Yes, then. and we do. Uh, we are a full service shop, so we do install everything we sell. Um, so if you're not comfortable doing it on your own, we can take care of you. Oh, that's great. I know I don't want to do that. So we will be back with more performance TV in just a bit. You all stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome to the Evaporust Tip of the Week. If you've been watching this segment all season, you know that Evaporust is safe, simple, and easy to use. One of the main questions we get is, how to maintain the Evaporust, and then how do you dispose of it once it is spent? It's a great question. We get it all the time. Evaporust, of course, works fantastic. It takes rust off down to the bare metal. And you put it in a bath like this, mm -hmm. and, and you want to make sure that bath stays as healthy as possible. Right. So what I tell people is, when you put it in a tub like this, take a marker right at the start and mark you a good line right on the line of the fluid. 
so that you know where that was all the time. And the reason you want to do that is evaporust is water-based. The chemical in evaporust does not evaporate, but water will. Mm -hmm. So if you leave this sitting out with this much surface area for three or four days, you're going to lose a lot of water. How do you fix that? You go get your own water, you pour it in here, bring it back to that mark you made, stir it up, and it'll start working just like it always was. Evaporust needs water to function. Mm -hmm. And you're going to use it over and over and over, and it's slowly you're going to notice it change colors. It's going to go from a yellow to a brown. Eventually, it's going to turn black like burnt motor oil. Right. And so how do you tell when it's dead? Simple. Put your hands in it, and once you do this and you can't see through to your fingers, it's time to let your evaporust go and go get some more. So how do you dispose of it, Tasha? Well, it's super easy. At that point, whenever it is spent, it's like liquid iron. So it's like a fertilizer. What you can do is you can put it in a pump up sprayer, dilute it 10 to one with water, and then spray it on your grass. It'll green up your grass for about six weeks. So it truly is non-toxic, biodegradable, and easy to use. It's right. And uh, if you need more information about this, visit our website at evaporust.com. We'll be back with more Performance TV in just a minute. Performance TV, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Performance TV. You know, when Ford came out with their six liter power stroke back in 2003, well, it really had a lot of good things going for it until the following years and they started doing some tweaking. But the folks at Power Hungry Performance, they've got something to fix that. Bill, thanks for joining us Absolutely. today. And you know, when, the, when they came out in 2003, they had a lot going. Yeah, they did. The, uh, the power stroke was a very impressive engine and a lot of people had a lot of hopes for it. Um, unfortunately, as uh, time went on, the 2004 and 2005 came out, they started reducing the, uh, the power output of these to try to prevent some engine problems. Now, there are three different computers controlling what we have going on here. Yes, before. they have uh, the engine control module, the training module, and the fuel injection control module. Um, the fuel injection control module is what we're going to work with today. And that's where we found the, the biggest problem to be with the going down in the fuel mileage, going down in the power as the years went on Correct. with our, our six liter. But real simple to take care of that. It's very easy to take care of. Um, we've had a lot of customers that would go into a, a dealership, get reflashed, and have lost fuel economy, lost performance, and we found a way to bring that performance back into these trucks. Yeah, what, like three to four miles per gallon? Um, on some trucks, yes. Uh, sometimes even more, depending on how you drive or the uh, driving conditions. So with the Power Hungry Performance Fickham Pro is what we're going to use on our 06 truck that we have here today, and really we're just going to plug right into underneath the dash. Yes. But we want to do something probably first. Yeah, before we uh, start programming the FICOM, we want to make sure that we do pull the relay from underneath the dash. If you do not pull that relay, you will damage one of the injectors. All right, and actually underneath the hood over yes. here, right? So we're just going to go with the, the big one right here. I'm going to plug that. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to set it right up there. So and now you can go ahead and plug in. All right. We'll just plug into the OBD2 port. And the device will power up. You need to have the key on or? Yeah, you do have to turn the key on. It has to initialize the programmer. Now with this programmer, are we able to see anything else as, as well? Um, the programmer does provide uh, the ability to read and clear diagnostic trouble codes, as well as the ability to monitor PIDs. Okay. So we can monitor battery voltage, tranny fluid temp, engine coolant temp. Uh, things like that. So this isn't something you can just plug in, take out, or you could, or you could leave it mounted maybe up on the dash. Uh, we do offer a uh, dash mount pod that allows the programmer to be mounted on the dash so that you can monitor all the particular engine functions that you decide. So uh, like other programmers, what it's probably doing right now is reading the VIN, seeing what truck it's talking to. Correct. It's uh, identifying the FICM module right now, and then we can go into the power programming menu, and we select the model year for the vehicle and this one is an 05 and later. And we're gonna do the 40 horsepower tune on this. Uh, the customer's indicated he pulls a lot with this vehicle, so we're just gonna go ahead and give him that one. So we have more than one choice with the we Figure do. Pro. Um, we do have uh, the 40 uh, horsepower towing program. Uh, we also have an 80 horsepower program, a little more power, um, sometimes a little bit better gains on the fuel economy. And we do have a 100 horsepower performance program that if you want to go out to the drag strip on the weekend and go play around. 
It's a good fun program to use. Yeah, that's not the one you want to use to tow with by any means. No. <laughs> uh, you do want to make sure that you select a program that's appropriate for the application you're using. Um, the hotter you go on the program, the hotter your exhaust temperatures are going to be. Yeah, that's definitely something to keep in mind. And did you say we're able to keep an eye on our EGTs? We do have an option for this programmer that allows you to connect a thermocouple to it. You can install it in the exhaust manifold and connect it to this device, and it will show you exhaust temperatures. Yeah, because Power Hungry Performance, you're not just about this Ficum Pro. You guys have all kinds of different items. Yeah, we do offer uh, the programmers for the 6 liters, 6.4, 7.3. Uh, we have chips for the 7.3s, our hydro chip. Um, we also do tuning for F-150s. Uh, we do gas tuning as well. All right, so how are we coming along with our Ficum Pro? And it is now finished. Programming is complete. So if you were to need to take this back to the dealer or to a shop of some kind, it's probably best to take the program out, just like you would a, another type of a tuner. Yeah, you do want to always remove any any um, additional programming that you've done to the vehicle when you go back to the dealer. Um, one, so it doesn't interfere with any of their diagnostics. Um, and two, if they should happen to reflash any of the modules in the truck, it'll lock the device and then you're kind of stuck. Oh, yeah, you definitely don't don't no. want to lose that. No. So what did we end up going with on this we one? We did the 40 horsepower tune. Okay. And uh, that's good for towing up to about 8,000 pounds. Normally, what type, uh, would you see any fuel economy change? Um, we should see uh, about a two mile per gallon increase in fuel economy. Um, throttle response should be dramatically improved. We like one to the, hear that. One of the big complaints on this truck after they've been reflashed uh, by the dealers, uh, very unresponsive, a lot of turbo lag. When you're leaving a light, it makes it very difficult sometimes even just get out of an intersection. So. Oh man, we don't like that when we can't get no. off the line. <laughs> no, so, um, th so that uh, offers a lot of improvement uh, in those uh, drivability characteristics and people have been very happy with it. Okay, so once we have that done, we'll go ahead and put the, the relay back in. We can go ahead and plug the relay back in All right. and we can go ahead and start the truck up. All right, we'll stick this back in here. And got that done. And we can fire that up. You want to find out more about any of their products, all you have to do is gopowerhungry.com. And there we go. 40 more horse just like that. We'll have more for you coming up just minutes away here on Performance TV. Simple as that. This edition of Performance TV is being brought to you by Evapo Rust, Super Safe Rust Remover. Engineered Diesel, we know diesel. Machinist Mate, dedicated to bringing new revolutionary cleaning products to the market. And by ZMAX, tested trusted performance. Welcome back to Performance TV. We're back with Mike from Evans Waterless Coolant. What do we got going so far on our 70 Chevelle here? Well, we've drained all the water-based coolant out, and then we've used forced air to blow any residual coolant out of the system, because there's always some of that left behind in the nooks and crannies. Right. Then we filled the system with prep fluid, Okay. ran that through the engine for about 15 minutes to make sure it circulates throughout the whole cooling system right. through the heater core so we had the heat on high for about 10 or 15 minutes to make sure that's well circulated and absorbed all the old water-based coolant. Gotcha. Okay. Then we've drained that out and again used air to okay. force the residual prep fluid out through the system. Okay. And that's what we've got right here then. Yeah. In fact, you can see how important it is to use the prep fluid because it, this is what it looked like going in and this is what it looked like coming out. So you can see it picked up a lot of that old coolant and flushed out the dirt and any uh, residual stuff left behind. Mike, if you can go ahead and pour that in there for me, I'd appreciate that. And while he's doing that, check this out. This week on the Z-Max Micro Lubricant Minute, Tommy, we're going to get just a little bit of a history lesson. Right. A lot of people think Z-Max Micro Lubricant is something new, but it has a rich history. Yes, it does. Originally developed by Joe Linke back in the 1930s, but one of its first main purposes didn't come along until closer to the end of World War II. What they were doing is they were using the product to help keep the spalling from happening in the Offenhauser camshafts to help the range and the reliability of the aircraft during the war. Now the Z-Max product starts off with a very highly refined petroleum oil. Then a lot of scientists came along, they worked with the product to make the oil penetration or the penetration of the product better for metal. 
the microlubricants had them come along since then and that's what makes this product work. Right, it has a rich history in racing back dating to the 30s. A lot of names you might know, Tony Bettenhausen, AJ Foyt, pretty successful at the 500. <laughs> Absolutely. The reason it wasn't you didn't know about it? It was called Speedway Cocktail. It oh. helped improve performance, and they called it insurance. I mean, there's a lot of attrition in those days, so if they had some insurance. One other name you might recognize? Carol Shelby. He loved it. Absolutely, and definitely spoke very highly about the product and used it in so many of his different applications. <laughs> Carol Shelby always says, I won't endorse it unless it works. It works, he said. <laughs> it works. That's right, and it can work for you, your engine, your transmission, your fuel, metal products. The Z-Max product absorbs into it, and that's what makes it work. Find out how it can work for you at ZMAX.com. So we've got all of our waterless coolant in there. We let our engine cool down. Now what do we do? Well, now that we've completed the installation, it's time to test for water content. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. First, you can use a refractometer. And it's simple to use. You just take a drop, a small sample of coolant, and you put it on the glass plate. You look through the viewer and make sure that the corresponding scale fits the appropriate water percentage that you have. That's one way of doing it. Or you can use a test strip and it's inexpensive and it's easy to do at home and you can match up the corresponding color and you can see from here that we're well below 3%. Once we're through testing water content, then we can put the do not add water decal on the radiator to prevent anybody from mistakenly adding water to the system. It's waterless, we want to keep it that way. Right, when I'm getting my oil changed and things like that, I want to make sure they know and don't put in water that we just took all that time to get That's out. Right. Yeah. So we got all the corrosive properties of the water out, and now our engine's gonna last forever. It'll be protected, it'll be preserved forever, permanently. You don't have to change out the coolant. You prevent electrolysis, you won't have corrosion, and your boiling point is so high now that you won't come close to it, you won't form vapor, and you won't build pressure. So you're protected for the life of the engine with Evans. Excellent. Well, that's all we've got this week. We'll see you next week here on Performance TV.